Hello. Hello, Hello everyone. Um, my name is Maria. Uh, you know me probably. Sorry, here we go. <laughs> okay, no, don't, don't worry, don't worry. Hello. Hello, Lord Leonard. Hello to, uh, hello to everyone. I would like to welcome you uh, on behalf of our trade union, uh, Renouveau Democracy, uh, to our fourth session. It is already fourth session with our coach, um, Lena Luisi. And um, today we will, uh, we will uh, focus on drive. So could you please tell us what does it mean drive for you at what, what we are going working on? Leonard, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Hawa. They're here um, by my side, helping me with the technical aspects and uh, helping making sure that everything goes well. Um, welcome everyone. Welcome to everyone who's been here before and to, to the new people who are here. Uh, welcome as well. For those of us who have our cameras turned off, please turn them on. Please turn them on. I encourage you to uh, reciprocate. Uh, you can hear my voice. You can see my eyes. Uh, it'd be good if we can all, yeah, fantastic, super. Thank you. Yeah, some of us, okay, great. You know, we're, we're just finishing work perhaps, or uh, we're just about to, you know, go back to work afterwards or something. Um, we're all in different sort of situations, uh, perhaps all at home, some at work. Uh, but it's always good to have a connection with people. And connection means when we can see someone, when we can hear them, when we can use practically all of our five senses, if possible, uh, to perceive um, uh, our interlocutor. So thank you. Thank you for that. Um, let's see now. So on the agenda today is drive. That's the title. But my question to you is how motivated do you feel? On a scale of one to 10, how motivated do you feel? Just chat that in, put that in the chat and we can see where people are and be honest. Huh? We start with honesty. How motivated do you feel today? Five, I see. Joanna, six, four, four, five. That must be a six or three. Motivated for what? Poof, three. Okay, between seven and eight. Five, four, three, seven or seven. Wow, Julia. Okay, no, it's, uh, sorry, someone else. Julia is a three. Edith is a, is a, it's a seven. Okay, great. Okay, great, okay, all right. So my next question is, who are you when you feel very motivated? Who are you when you feel very motivated? What do you do? How do you behave? How do you smile? Do you have a smile? Huh? Write that in the chat, happy. Solar, fantastic, energized, okay. With a lot of energy, confident, happy. Okay, dynamized, okay, let's see. Imbalanced, strong and resilient, okay. You feel like a five, okay, five is being centered. Okay, smiling, Re myself really, really myself, effective. Okay, ah, so if you're really yourself, what does it mean to be less than that? What does it mean to you, for all of you to be less than motivated? Write that in, write that in the chat. A multitasker when you're motivated, fantastic. <laughs> uh, need for change, distracted, it takes a lot of time or energy. Oh my God. Okay, difficult to concentrate. Hung off from light, from life. Sluggish, empty brain. Yeah, I, I know those feelings. <laughs> Disappointment, lazy. Okay, disconnected, feels like uh, uh, sad all year round, absolutely. Cloudy, raining, cold, humid. Yeah, distracted. Okay, not satisfied. Okay, so all of these things can differentiate us from when we feel motivated and unmotivated. Okay, let me just, before asking you further questions, let me just quickly make a summary of how, what, we, what we've done, what we've been through, and what is this? What are these four sessions about, yeah? So create your comfort yourself. Um, as I mentioned time and time before, it's not about being comfortable. It's about expanding your comfort zone. It's about moving out of this comfort zone, this habitual pattern that we're used to and exploring other areas and then gathering tools. It's your hero's journey it, or heroine's journey for that matter. It's your journey whereby you have to um, prove to yourself and perhaps to others as well um, that you are competent, but not only competent, you're resourceful 
as well. You find resources outside of yourself and inside of yourself, yeah? So create your comfort yourself is about finding how we tick, how we function, how we use our operating system, yeah? Remember I made the analogy of Windows 97 and OS, whatever, XP, whatever it is now that we use. Um, it's about harnessing our energy and focusing and guiding our energy for ourselves and for others. Another Tibetan um, uh, um, saying, um, you have to, um, or something like, you have to do things for others, yourself included. Yeah. So this makes sense to me. I hope it makes sense to you. Um, what did we do uh, last week? What did we cover last week? Well, last week we did a physical session. We started out with physical and we learned not just exercises to make ourselves more flexible and reinforce our, you know, muscles, which are caught, which are centered to our spine. Not only those things, but we experienced how to hold and our, how to carry ourselves. We experienced how to hold and carry ourselves physically and metaphysically. Yeah. And that uh, our normal patterns of behavior, which give us low energy or mediocre energy or stagnant energy, can be invigorated with a new dignified position. Remember, we did the power positions and we, we, we tried to start all the exercises from a dignified position. Head flies to the ceiling, the spine follows the skull, the shoulders drop and the pelvis drops and follows as well. The sternum is lifted a few, a few millimeters higher. Yeah. Why don't all of us, why don't we take that position right now? All of us, we can speak, we can still remain seated. Just take that position. Yeah, and maybe just close your eyes in that position. How does that feel for you? Do you feel less motivated in that position? Semantis, come on. I see you. <laughs> Take that position. Leave the back of your chair. I love and leave the back of your chair. Goodbye, back of my chair. So I'm not sitting back in my chair. I'm not even sitting up in back of the ride. I'm sitting on the edge of my chair. Life begins on the edge. Life begins on the edge. On the edge of what? On the edge of our comfort zone. Life begins on the edge of our comfort zone. Okay? So we're in this dignified position and our eyes are closed. My question to you is, do you feel, are you inclined to feel more motivated now or less? Write that in the chat. Are you inclined in this dignified position that we used in the physical session? Are you inclined to be more motivated or less? Yeah. Much more, 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 a bit more. Okay. More, more. Okay. Much more. Okay. Okay. If thoughts finish, then more. Uh, if, they, if, they, if they keep, okay, more. Helps to be motivated. I don't know. Thank you for being honest, Yona. The same, the same. Okay, great. So we have this, uh, we have this idea now. Okay. So some of us, um, perhaps it's easier to be connected with your bodies, and some of us, perhaps it's more more difficult. But perhaps we are very, very well connected with our minds, with our logical, rational thinking minds, which is excellent as well for the work that we have to do. Okay. All right then. So let's come back to this. In the mental session, we understood that energy not only flows from our bodies by adopting a powerful position by moving in a way we're conscious of our bodies, but also from our minds. Yeah, energy is not only coming from our bodies, but also from our minds, through our ability to focus. Remember this, through our ability to focus. And we asked ourselves, well, where do we spend our time focusing? Are we focusing on the negative or the positive? What we don't have or how much opportunity we have to get what we want? Are we focusing on things that are outside of our control or inside of our control? And that we found out that when we focus on things which are within our control, we're less stressed. We have more autonomy. We have more responsibility and we have to perhaps make more effort, but we have the rewards as well. Remember this? Remember this? We learn to focus. Okay, I'm just going to pull this up now. Um, sorry. We learn to focus uh, to negative. Okay. Uh, we didn't, we learned to focus away from the negative and towards the positive. We have to direct our focus. Um, we have to direct our minds. We're not just 
you know, we're not just um, influenced by things around us. We also allow ourselves to be influenced by things around us. We give ourselves the permission to receive all kinds of information coming from life, whether the TV, the, the whatever, your portable uh, laptop, um, news items, you know, commercial items. We allow ourselves to be exposed to this. So we have a control. We, with what we can control is how much we expose ourselves to that and how much do we expose ourselves to sunlight or to, or to, or to trees, to nature. How much do we expose ourselves to good energy from other people? Yeah, also about that. And by the way, sometimes we perhaps may not have uh, the most the best of colleagues and when we after we speak with them, or even parents for that matter or family members and after speaking with them we feel oh whew, i feel like i've lost all my energy who's felt like that raise their hands i know i have sometimes well there's a key i'll leave, just leave you with a key before moving on the key is this love your family love your your friends those friends who pull your energy down pull your energy down but choose your peers, choose the people who build you up, who inspire you. Choose the crowds of people that, that, that motivate you, the TV programs or whatever, the Netflix or you know, documentaries or something that inspires you. Choose that and repeat that more often. Love your family, choose your peers. Yeah, that's the goal. Yeah, as far as emotions and when you feel better, of course, you have more feeling, you have a feeling that you can do more your potential is increased, yeah? And then you take more action. And then of course, you're more likely to get the results that you want, okay? Okay, that's just another tip and trick uh, that uh, I thought of passing on to you. Um, so we did the physical sense, uh, session, the mental session. And then on Friday, we did the emotional session where we looked at things, people, and situations that we have little or no control over, yeah? We looked at these things, people, and situations that we have no control over whatsoever. Perhaps write in the chat, those things that you have absolutely no control over. Reprogram my brain, our brains. I mean, yes, we do. We are reprogramming our brains as we, uh, as we are here even. The weather, absolutely. Weather, I have no, absolutely no control over. What other things? Work processes, yep. That's the system. Uh, strangers behavior, absolutely. And even people who are not strangers, their behavior too. Okay, IT, no, yeah, absolutely no, no control. Deadlines, workload. What else do we have no control? News, what else? What else do we not have control over? Traffic, absolutely. What else do we not, confinements, true. Internet bugs in Zoom, <laughs> absolutely. Pandemic, absolutely. Health, uh, death of close relatives, absolutely. No control, our boss, our boss's moods. Others, life, emotions. Ah, oh, whose emotions? Whose emotions? Other people's emotions, not ours. We do have control over those. Bureaucracy, yeah, we can't control that. Who wants to control it, by the way? <laughs> uh, a dog, okay, well, okay, we can be friends with a dog. Okay, besides the three rules that I mentioned before, if we have a problem, uh, politicians, absolutely. Okay, great, super, 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 super. I'm gonna close this now. Besides I mentioned before, I mentioned before, we can have three choices always in any decision we can make. Love it, leave it, or change it, right? Love it, leave it, or change it. There's another thing that I think some of us missed or most of us missed about things that we cannot control. We cannot control the past. Can't control it, right? It's the past, it's done. And we, we won't, to dwell there causes stress. You know, if it's negative, huh? to dwell on the past, even if it's five minutes ago, half an hour ago, to dwell there, to stay, to turn this around over and over again, doesn't, doesn't motivate us. It pulls us back. I would like to describe motivation as imagine you're on the seafront. It doesn't have to be Coxseed. It doesn't have to be you know, on the Belgian coast. It can be any coast you want to. You're there and you have a, a horse-drawn ch uh, chariot, right? Uh, you have the coach, you have like a few seats, you know, beside you and in the back and you have six beautiful horses yeah imagine that and the sun is there blue sky cool breeze and the, and the tide is out it's coming in slowly and gently imagine this right and the horses you have three horses in the front and three horses in the back where are you going yeah i've got motivation i've got lots of motivation 
but they're pulling in different directions. So the idea is find your motivation and bring it to the front. Bring all six horses in front of the carriage and move forward, or at least four in front, two in the back. So you're moving forward slower than you should be, but okay. Yeah. So just take that analogy. My motivation are my six horses. And my question to myself would be, are all of my horses in front of the carriage? Or are they scattered to the side? Or are they untethered, going somewhere else, running away, back to the, uh, to the stable? Or in the dunes somewhere? I've got to go and fetch them. Where are your horses? Where is your motivation? And this is a question that I'd like you to ask yourself again and again throughout this time until the hour is over together, okay? So, okay, I've given you that. We looked at um, our emotions. Um, oh, sorry, I didn't perhaps explain to emotions. When we went through emotions, we looked at things, yeah, okay, things, people, uh, situations of people where we don't have uh, um, control or power over. Obviously, there's lots of things that we don't control, okay? Um, but we still have power. We still have a power and a skill that we can practice. And this is, of course, compassion. Yeah, compassion, you don't need to be with the person like empathy or sympathy. You can be, you can be prior to meeting the person, after meeting the person or the situation, or at any time, all you need is you. All you need is you and your mind yeah? to practice compassion. And we learned that it helps us balance our emotions and cast our mind in a direction that empowers us. Yeah? That's what we learned. So today's drive, um, Drive, I like to call spirit. Yeah? I like to call drive our spirit, just like the horses. They have a spirit to them. Yeah? And it's that subtle energy that lives inside of us and takes up residence according to the relationship we, we give, or rather the meaning we give to the things that we're doing. Yeah? So our spirit is that subtle energy that lives inside of us and takes up residence, takes space up inside of us according to the meaning that we give to our activities and our self-image. Yeah? Our self-image is tied to our motivation. Low motivation, where is your self-image? Where is your self-esteem, self-confidence? Where is it? Where would it be? Just think about the last time perhaps you had very little motivation. What did you think of you? Yeah? And think of the time when you had lots of motivation. What were, how were you feeling in your bodies? How were you feeling in, in, your, in your spirit, in your emotions, in your mind? Where was it directed? Were you lucid or were you sort of, oh my God, I'm sorry, where am I? Where are we? Yeah. So what, what are we doing here? We're measuring. And I mentioned in the first session, I believe, the better we can measure things, the better we can manage things, just like our finances, just like the time. Yeah. We measure it. We, can, we have an opportunity, a better opportunity to manage it, yeah? Okay, so again, I'm preaching a lot. Um, <laughs> by the way, chat in now. Um, let's see, there's a few people that chatted something. Uh, politicians, yeah, big reach, right? Collision, okay, or the future. Can't control the future. Stress from others, we can't control that, but we can manage it. We can manage it. Yes, we can't learn from the past. Yes, you, yes, but you can, you learn from the past experience. Yes, you do as long as you don't dwell there. Have you ever driven a car looking in the reverse mirror, in the, in the review mirror? Have you ever done that? Drive the car forward? Yeah, and stay looking in the reverse, reverse mirror? You can't do it. You can't conduct your life forward in life from the present moment to the future, looking backwards. So the idea is yes, look backwards sometimes. Look in the past, take a moment to analyze it, and then, as they say in Dutch, let it go, let it go. And that requires forgiveness, but okay, but that's another, that's another training, that's another, another kettle of fish, okay? All right, so um, write in the chat now, there are two types of motivation. Write it in what you think they are. Two types of motivation. What is your, in, what, in your opinion, sorry, it seems like the end of the week for me. I, I told this to Maria already. It's the beginning of the week. It's Monday. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> right to the intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation. Thank you. Um, okay, so these are two types of motivation. Which do you think is the strongest? 
which is the strongest, which is the most powerful, the, the most uh, uh, prevalent motivation? Intrinsic, okay, can be intrinsic, okay. Which is the most sustainable, the most healthy, the most enduring? I, absolutely, it is intrinsic. We can be motivated by salary, pay, prestige, importance that, or the others, other people looking at us and talking about us and thinking, oh my God, you know, uh, oh, you know, Leonard, he's so good, blah, 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 blah. But if that's my motivator, then I'm not listening to myself. I'm not truly finding out where am I? What do I need? How, what do I value? And what do I believe? And how can I serve other people? Aligning my talents so that I, I find my purpose in my life. Right? When we're looking outside of ourselves for solutions, I mean, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to, to, to find out where they are, where the resources are, but the resourcefulness is important too. We have to recognize that this is where we start and end. Yeah? We begin and end. It's the alpha and omega it's from here. Yeah? I'm going to read the chat further on. Intrinsic, 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 intrinsic. Okay, great. Okay, so there's intrinsic and uh, extrinsic, internal or internal. Now, uh, external, we are dependent upon the outside influence. And so if the outside influence would change, oh, well, there goes our motivation. <laughs> but if intrinsic, well, no matter what happens, uh, we still have that, that, that GPS system, in, in that uh, compass inside of ourselves, and we can, we can adapt and modify and still move forward in the right direction, yeah? Um, it's the difference between saying, oh, I'm against, um, viruses or I'm for health. That's the difference. As long as viruses are there, I'm finding my motivation, I'm strong, I'm against them. But as soon as they disappear, where's my purpose? Where's, where's my mission? Where's my, where's my, uh, where's my, my power? Huh? Where's my motivation? Okay. All right, so I would like to share with you, let's see now, um, I know that, um, Let's see if this is possible. A slide, one slide. Let's see if I do it like this. And then um, let's see, bear with me a second. Okay, share and PowerPoint. Okay, so this is the slide. This is your motivation. This is your motivation. As you can see, it's an iceberg, right? And there's a top part to it and a bottom part to it. What does the top part correspond to? Write that in the chat. What does the top part correspond to? For you, in your opinion. Don't have, it's not about being right or wrong. It's about just finding out these things. What does the top part of the iceberg External motivation, extrinsic, oh, extrinsic, uh, what we see, of course, what we see, what others see too. External, what people see, exactly. And what do people see? What is external? What is uh, expressed externally? As far as our image, yeah, it can be our image. The tip, the tip of the iceberg. It's uh, there for others to see. Yeah, it's also there because uh, it is there. The visible, the extrinsic motivation, the tiny part of I'm tiny part of my real. I like that, Inya. I like that. A small part. What we are asked to do, perhaps, or what we ask ourselves to do. Okay. Uh, what we let people see. Okay. Also, well, this is great. You're a great, great crowd. What we let people see. Okay. Well, look. This is I like to call the what. What do I do? When do I do it? With whom do I do it? How do I do it? This is all what people can see. Well, you need to get this uh, program you need to um, do this step and then do the second step and the third step. And this is how you would process rationally, logically, go through a process to, to get to whatever goal you're looking for, right? So what is the bottom? What is the bottom now? Write it in the chat. What is the bottom for you in your opinion? Official part, okay. Some emotions, unconscious. Yes, the why, the why, the why. 
the what makes me tick. Oh, yeah, okay, the secret's hidden there. The soul, I love it. I love it. The big treasure of motivation. Yeah, the big treasure, oh, fantastic. Take these, the blind spots. Absolutely, your blind spots. That's what we're here to do. We're here to look at our blind spots and then uncover them, unveil them, yeah? Okay, yes, indeed, it is the why. Let me see if I can pull this out now. It is the why. It is the why, and it refers to our mindset, our clear vision and focus, our strong goals, yeah? Strong goals, compelling reasons, yeah? the reasons which are aligned with our values and our mission. Bonjour, for Matisse, avec um, Tsukaina. Okay, I'm gonna, there he is. Jeremy's here, and he's muted. Okay, compelling reasons and positive belief system, our investment, and our inspiration. Also, it's the permission that we give ourselves to achieve our goals. You know, sometimes we say to ourselves, oh, no, I can't, I can't just do it. Well, that's, that's Leonard not giving himself the permission, yeah? So on top, I like to call, peu importe. And on the bottom, I like to call, le grand pourquoi. These are convincing reasons. It's our engagement. It's our belief system. It's our focus, as I mentioned before, and it's the obligation, the intrinsic motivation that we feel that we must do it in spite of our environment. Yeah, it comes down to that again. And this is all about the, um, oops, sorry, go back. It's all about the uh, percentages, right? We can see that on the top, perhaps it's maybe 10%, maybe a little bit more, maybe 15, maybe 20%. And on the bottom, it's the huge percentage. Imagine winning the election with 80% of the vote. No, you have all the power. And so what we're doing here, we are giving ourselves back this power, yeah? It's all about taking it back. Okay, I'm looking in the chat now. Does this make sense? Give me a hand sign, give me a thumbs down if it doesn't make sense. Any questions? Any questions? Write them in the chat. I'm looking in the chat now. Uh, our base, our fundamental, our psyche, yes, of course. It's metaphysical. On the bottom is metaphysical. It's like the Jung, oh no, rather, sorry, Freudian, or oh, I think it's Freud or the union um, um, iceberg, yeah? Psychic, okay, great. All right, then let me just take that away for myself. So we're looking at our motivation and I like to define motivation as like a pressure as well. And we have the motivation to do something or the negative motivation, meaning that we're more motivated just to keep things as they are, yeah? Who knows about this? Where you are uh, uh, motivated to, um, Hold on, sorry, I'm getting some, getting some problems here with my computer stalling. Oh. Um, bear with me. Okay, good, we're back. So who knows this, where you feel motivated to, um, to, to do something or motivated to keep things as they are? Don't change, don't rock the boat, please. Who knows this? I won't rock the boat. I'm so happy with the way things are. I need the stability. Behind our motivation are our needs. And uh, we don't have time for it to go into it today, but um, maybe at a later stage, we can go through our you know, essential human needs and how we move to satisfy those needs as well. Most people postpone change until it's the last minute. It's human to do it, absolutely. It's also human to strive for more. It's also human to reach beyond our borders. It's also human to imagine something bigger. It's also human, to, uh, to develop things. Um, otherwise, we would, we would be, we'd be living in trees like, like the apes do. We wouldn't have evolved over that point. Yeah? So it's important that we recognize this. It's, it's human to, to, to behave in positive and negative ways. Yeah? All right then, so moving on now, I'd like to ask you a question. Just to recall a moment where you were very motivated to do something, extremely motivated to do something. We're going to find out two other factors about motivation now. Just imagine, just imagine your minds, and perhaps use it, you know, take a pen and paper and write down the situation where you were extremely motivated to get something done or to achieve something in your life. Think of a moment. Yeah. Okay. Now the question is, was it rational, your motivation? Or was it emotional? You can write that in the chat. 
both. Kiretis is both, both. Patricia, both, both, emotional. Emotional and rational, okay. So which was the most important? Which was the driving force? Petra, Pet, Petia says rational. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's have a look at that, Pet, Pet, Petia. Hmm? Emotional. Um, we are driven by our emotions. We are driven by our emotions. And uh, I gave the, I think the sentence or the phrase, yes, on well, first day Tuesday, last Tuesday was, or maybe it was during the mental session. Uh, we make, we choose with our emotional, we choose for emotional reasons and we rationalize, we justify with our logic. We choose for emotional reasons and we justify with logic. And it happens in that order, never in the other order. It's never rational. It's never rational choice. There's no motivation. We are moved, we, are, we everything we do is done with our emotions. Everything we do is made from an emotional level first. And I'll tell you why. The reason is because we are hardwired and primed to make two decisions at any given moment. How do I experience more pleasure and more satisfaction? And how do I avoid discomfort and pain? Okay. And that is not rational. That is emotional. Whether the pain is physical pain, psychological pain, you know, whether the pleasure is the same thing as well, you know, physical or psychological. We don't want to feel, for example, pain could be, for example, um, you want to look good in front of others. Uh, you want to keep your identity of the perfectionist or the person that gets the work done. Well, and it's painful not to have that. It's painful to, to feel that, oh, yeah, well, I, I failed. It's painful to, 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 to admit perhaps that you're wrong for certain people more than others, depending on the situation. Yeah? That's pain. And so we want to, as human beings, avoid the pain. Yeah? And it's, we're hardwired for this. We can't avoid this. And we make decisions on those two principles, on those two twin forces, I would say. Both of them. What will happen if I do it? What won't happen? Or what will happen if I don't do it? Yeah, that could be a, a motivator. More, and you know, we tend to be more uh, focused on the pain rather than the pleasure, because people. I believe that you know, in my experience, okay, through dancing, through my working kinesiology and 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 training people like yourself in institutions and in governments and in commercial companies, that people are more motivated by the painful side than by the. Um, you know, pleasurable side. People are more, more motivated to avoid losing than to gain winning. Yeah? People are, are more afraid of the unknown than of the difficulties and hardships. Oh, let me just stay with it anyway, because I know it and it's becoming familiar. Yeah? I'm reading the chat. Emotions could be negative, like fear, fear of failure, keeping the level of perfection, etc. Yes, it can. Fear in this case would be pain. Okay, yes, it will. Uh, Petra, perhaps fear equals pain. Okay, good. Indeed, indeed. Um, so for me, what else is painful for you? What is painful for you? If we can truly understand our motivation, where it's coming from, intrinsic, extrinsic, emotional more than logical, and then am I led by more pain or, my ple or by pleasure? What will happen if I don't do it? <clears throat> What will happen if I do do it? Okay, yeah, but I'm not bothered with that. <laughs> I'm bothered about losing something, yeah? You know, people will fight for their reputation. You just have to look at politicians. We won't get into this. <laughs> we won't get into this, but yeah, okay. It's all there, it's all there. And they're just human beings, by the way. They're just like us. Like we worked out in the compassion part. They're just like us. They're, they're, they're learning from life, yeah? So um, my question to you is, what is painful and uncomfortable for you, specifically at work or in general, in life? Yeah. Let's work it out. What is painful for you? Not, not being up to it, shame, absolutely. Shame is, a, oh my God, incredible, I would say, negative 
motivator, strongest emotion. Okay, okay. Being disconnected to others, being bullied. Okay, now we're getting into some, 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 some deepness here, not being respected. Wow. Humiliation. Being right, but still being contradicted. Oh my God, have you ever been in that situation before? Loads of times, low self-esteem, bad relationships. Yeah. So what do we do when we're fearful of, um, of uh, this? Um, we move away from it. And we'll do everything to avoid it. We'll put more energy in to avoid feeling pain, discomfort, than we would put in to discover our full potential, whatever that is. How about we see that? Yeah. Loss of people you love, absolutely. Being away from my colleagues, I don't, yeah, of course, I won't be away from them. We have to be careful with these, um, these answers. And not, I mean, of course, you're being honest, and I thank you for that, and uh, I really appreciate that. I think everyone does. Um, at the same time, you know, these motivators are not necessarily the, the healthiest kind of motivators we can, um, that we can use to support us. Yeah? Being wrongfully judged. judged. Okay, well, say, for example, I, I feel that I'm afraid to be wrongfully judged. How much motivation and potential do you think I could muster to speak in front of people? To... Uh, declare my opinion to my boss or to uh, to raise an important point at a meeting yeah. that is outside of my control I have no control over that and if I focus on that I'm stressing myself and I'm losing my control this is another way we can look at ourselves and and dissect and say well look does this give me power does this make me feel inspired and, and open and ready to do things and having lots of energy at my side, my horses in front of my carriage? Or does it put me, oh my God, I have one horse in front and he's running off and all the rest are behind me, pulling me backwards. Being wrongfully judged. Ideally you move away from, exactly. And we move towards the pleasure. Of course we move towards holidays, pay rise, uh, seeing friends, seeing family, uh, being in the sun, having a coffee at last, speaking to people, talking about others, <laughs> um, you know, that kind of thing. So this is interesting. This is information from you, to you, about you, and for you. Yeah? So my question to you is, how willing are you? In the beginning of this series, I mentioned to you that these sessions presuppose that you have the capacity and the willingness to self-reflect, to share, and to make micro-adjustments. Yeah. So my question to you now is how willing are you to do whatever is necessary to break through? Between, on a scale of one and 10, break through those boundaries, that negative motivation, the pull of it, 10. Wow, 10, okay, 10. Okay, now, oh my God. Okay, so there's the motivation. There's the motivation. It depends. Of course it depends, but no, let it depend upon you. <laughs> let it depend upon you. Huh? Then that's where you'll find, you know, the pioneers in life, you know, whether it's political, whether it's, uh, it's uh, sports, whether it's uh, pioneers like Ed and Hillary, you know, climbing the Everest or people who do things for the first time, you know, they have internal motivation. Yeah. Uh, the internal people with internal motivation are perhaps, um, another uh, stratosphere above, above us, yeah, above the regular person. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, it's good. It's good to know where you are. And these numbers give you an estimate uh, of where you are and what you need to do to get to number 10. Yeah? What you need to do to get to number 10. Okay, so we talked about motivation being what? Motivation being two things, extrinsic or intrinsic. Internal motivation, I'm guided by my own self, my own, my own beliefs and values, and they're aligned, and my actions come, yeah? Or I'm um, guided by other people's beliefs and values, and I'm guided by them. And how that difference, how does that make you feel? We also talked about motivation being um, emotional and logical. Both of them are there, but we choose for emotional reasons, and we justify of our logic. We need to justify it, but it's only like 20%. It's not a lot. We can just we need to justify it to other people. Well, I did this because of these reasons. Yeah. But the emotional part is is primary, and the emotions, of course, is pain and pleasure. 
I'm motivated by fear. We all are motivated by fear in life. And the, the final tweak, the final um, uh, yeah, button that we have to press is revert that. We need to be motivated by our passion. So the question comes is how we how do we get to that passion? How do we how do we find out about that passion of ours? Does anyone have any ideas? Someone comes to you and says, oh, Leonard, you know, how, how do I find out about passion? How do I get to, to know myself, that aspect of myself? I know about my dark side. I know about my shadow side. But how do I get, you know, really to make use and, 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 and take advantage of my passion? Imagine the great success. Yeah. What else can we do? My experience, every time I was motivated by passion, it caused a lot of envy, criticism, and even uh, mobbing. Okay, could you handle it? Sometimes we have to pay a price. And I would submit to you that the price for paying for price, uh, the price that we pay for being, for settling, for being half as much as we really are, half as smart, half as motivated, half as giving, half as loving, I think that's a big price. But that's just my opinion. You know, everyone makes their own opinion of it. By listening to our feelings and needs. Uh, just do it. Okay, just do it. Okay, I'm going to talk about motivation here. The, you know, our actions are guided by our motivation. Yeah, remember on top, these are actions. What, how, when, with whom. And the why is our motivation, yeah? People judge you as a narcissist then. Really, do they? Is that true? And who are these people? Are they up with us? Or are they those who sort of are settling? It's a good question to ask yourself. Look, um, the begin to change anything, we need to gather information. First, we need to have awareness of where we are inside and outside. And then we gather information. The more information we gather, the better choices we can make. So these people, who are they? Some uh, make some personality tests first to see what, what your signature strength, strengths are if you don't have any idea. Okay, why not? Why not? That's a good, that's a good place to start. Uh, uh, the what takes more than 20%. We have to put some things aside a while, sometimes because of, other, well, listen, we have to make sacrifices. And I'll tell you right now, we are sacrificing our time right now to be on this call together. In any case, we make sacrifices. You don't make sacrifices at certain times. You make sacrifices all the time. That's why we were talking about what's the ideal posture? What's the ideal focus? Where are you sacrificing your energy? And what result is that getting you? And then if it's more negative than positive, who has the responsibility? Everything is a sacrifice. Everything is a sacrifice. Focus on one project, not two or three, just one. Okay, that could be an interesting thing. No, we, uh, we invest time for learning. Okay, yeah, we do as well. And uh, learning from something that you can learn from. By the way, the learning, the, the, uh, the, the area or um, um, the zone of learning is outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, just like a baby has to start walking and it goes through all the pains of by finding the musculature, finding the balance, falling over how many times. Yeah, but still going on. Still going on, yeah. Your learning zone is outside of your comfort zone. It's not within it. It's not within it. Focus on one thing. Okay, just one. Okay. Okay, very good. Um, let's see. Let's go quickly now to the outcome frame. I see we only have 10 minutes left. And um, okay. I, I overbook on things that I want to speak about and, um, and share with you. But let's just do this. It's called the outcome frame. It comes from neuro-linguistic programming. And it's tweaked. I've tweaked it. I've tweaked it for you. Okay, so just imagine now, um, we spoke about motivation, where it comes from. We learned a little bit about ourselves through this analogy. My iceberg is hidden. No one sees it. They just see what I'm doing, but they don't know why I'm doing it. They don't really know. They don't know my motivation. They don't know my meaning, my, my, my conviction, and the permission that I give myself to achieve what I want to achieve. It's intrinsic, my motivation. It's emotional. And it's, and it's justified with my logic. I can explain it to people. I can, I, can, I can share it with people, yeah? But it's emotional. I have a need. It fulfills my need either for security, for diversity, for importance, 
for, for belonging to a group or it, it feeds my need to contribute and grow to society, not just myself, yeah? So it's very powerful and I'm very clear about it, okay? So let's look at our goals now. So I'd like you to write down a goal, any goal. It doesn't have to be big, it doesn't have to be big. It can be very, you know, um, small, it can be very uh, insignificant. And it can be a big goal, it can be a big desire. So we can see this on all, on all levels, okay? Write down your goal. One, no, just write it down. I want a million euros. <laughs> can't be anything, I'm, I'm just kidding. But why not? Why can't it be that? Huh? I'm permitting myself to think big. Why not? Uh, organized private industry. Well, okay, inner peace, okay, sports, sports daily. Detect when someone this, uh, tries to manipulate me immediately. Ooh, <laughs> we're all manipulators. And we, you know, the secret is we manipulate ourselves. Manipulate, manipulate, we, we, excuse me. We manipulate ourselves to settle, not to strive. Be calm, be relaxed, stay in the comfort zone. It's okay, you don't really need it. We do. We're, okay, so we listen, this is our goals. Now write the goals out again. For yourself, you don't have to write it in the chat. Write the goals out again in the first person, positively. Not, I, I don't want to, you know, for example, if it's me, I don't want to eat uh, chocolate cake. I wouldn't write it like that. It's negatively. I want to write, I want to eat healthy food that gives me lots of vitality and energy so that I can be there for myself and for others. For example, yeah, I'm using, you know, first person singular, I. Doesn't involve anyone else, just me. And it's positively formulated. It's not negatively formulated. I want to avoid people bothering me at work. I want to create environments that inspire me and others. Or I want to do my work proficiently regardless of what's happening around me. That's a fantastic goal. That's a fantastic goal. Formulated fantastically, positively, and in the first person. Yeah. Second. Is it within your control? If you formulated it cor correctly, it is within your control. If you haven't, then you've got to go back to point number one. First person, positively formulated. So the second, to the answer to the second question is yes or no. Is it within your control? There's no halfway house. It is 100% or it isn't. 99% is not. It's got to be 100%. Why? Because it's more achievable. And then when you achieve one goal, whether it's washing the dishes at night before going to bed, <laughs> speaking about myself, or whatever it is, uh, achieving uh, the, the job of your, of your lifetime or the position of your lifetime. Um, if you, when you achieve it, if it's within your control, it's more achievable. You're more likely to achieve it. Question number three, sensory specific. When I achieve my goal, how would I feel? How would I behave? How would I breathe? How would I speak to people? Yeah? Sensory specific means the five senses. Kinesthetic, how do I feel? How do I stand? Yeah. How do I breathe? Kinesthetic, what do I see? You know, what do I see in front of me? Maybe my goal is to uh, move to another part of the world. Okay, well, what am I seeing in front of me? When I, I know when I've achieved my goal, I see this. I know that when I've achieved my goal, I will feel this. I will taste this. I will smell this. I will hear people speaking and they'll be saying this. Yeah? Sensory specific. And be as full as you can. Be as, you know, give as much content to this as possible because we're sensing and feeling beings. Huh? And we need to have a measurement whereby we can say, yes, I've arrived because it feels like I, I want it to feel. Hmm? So one, two, three, question number four would be where? Time, place, give a date, give a specific place where you are um, and give a time. Next week, this time next week at uh, 5.25, 5.24. Hmm? Time specific and place. Yeah. The next question would be, um, 
is it ecologically responsible? Does it do me or others any harm? Is it responsible? Am I being responsible when I achieve my goal? So it's kind of like an ethical question here. If it does, oh yeah, it does my colleagues some harm. Well, you go back to the, to the top and say, well, is my goal positively formulated? Yeah, you follow? Okay. Good. Okay. And then you want to, the last question is, um, uh, it's this one. Who is this person? Who is this person who achieves this goal? Who is this person? And maybe what, when you answer that question, you come up with another person who's achieved the goal already. In which case, it's good to give them a call <laughs> or to contact them find out more about how they do what they do. If it isn't, or even if it is, you want to project yourself into that image of you, if it's me, then Leonard, having that goal achieved. Who am I? How am I behaving? How am I, how am I speaking? How am I performing? How am I uh, able to connect with people? How proficiently am I able to work? What have I learned? What supplementary knowledge have I gained? Yeah. All these questions you need to ask yourself. Who am I? Who is that new me, the, the me that doesn't settle? The me that strives for goals, that um, is determined, is persistent, yeah? is willing to do the work, yeah? to put in the effort, yeah? who's taking responsibility and learning from it who's moving outside of their comfort zone into a learning zone. And this has all everything to do with what I mentioned before in the beginning, your self-image. Your self-image is, is uh, when I think about it, it's, 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 it's your belief system. Our beliefs are things that we think are true. Yeah? And according to what we think is true, which is always, always subjective, we have an image of ourselves. It's already formulated there. And it is in the back. It's the context in which we act and behave. If we don't believe something, well, we don't, we, we don't move towards that, uh, to that whatever goals or resources are there. If we don't believe we can do something better, then we can't. Yeah? You know the old saying, I think it's Lao Tzu or uh, Henry Ford that says it as well. The man who says he can and the man who says he cannot are both right. They are both right. It's all subjective. Yeah? If you read autobiographies of people who have been through all kinds of perhaps difficulties and came through with a, with a new thinking, with, with a, an understanding about life. I mean, ones that come to mind, of course, besides the okay, political figures, you know, Viktor Frankl you know, um, and uh, Primo Levi you know, out of the Second World War. Yeah? Uh, they, they are uh, people who are looking for more, they're in difficult situations and they're challenging them, their minds to see everything that is not there, to go beyond what they see with their eyes and see what their minds are. Yeah. Um, just a few points here, a few details um, before we close. Um, okay, first of all, any questions? That's the first, the first point maybe I should turn. It's been an extremely short session. Any questions, any thoughts, any things that you would like to share? Any even different thoughts, you know, that's also good. It, it, it makes it rich. Huh? Looking at the chat. When will the fifth session take place? Okay, yeah, well, that's, we, we have to, I have to speak with uh, Maria. We have to speak together and find out what, when, that, when that would be possible. Uh, where did you learn of them? Oh my God, well, that's a long story. Yeah, uh, what can I start? How long do you have? <laughs> we need to sit down for coffee afterwards, perhaps. Yeah, lots of places, you know, dan not only dancing, I, I, I support myself a lot with the dancing or the, the, um, the thinking about what I was doing when I was dancing, focusing, you know, using all your ability, you're pulling through, you're going over hurdles of, uh, you know, 
physical and psychological pain. So it wasn't always rosy, huh? even though on stage, wow, so fantastic and stuff like this. You were always amazed and inspired by it. But behind the scenes, it's a different story. Often our ego would like to keep us in our comfort zone, I think, absolutely. So uh, look, people are more, more inclined to do things which keep them comfortable yeah? and less likely to do things which make them uncomfortable. However, people who do succeed, they're the ones doing the things which are uncomfortable. Hmm? It's uncomfortable for us, it's uncomfortable for them as well. They don't find any more comfort in doing things, whatever, if it's an athlete, waking up every day at whatever hour in the morning, going for a run, having these big meals and then having to diet and train every day. They don't feel any more comfortable. It's still uncomfortable for them. But they're prepared to do the work. <laughs> and whereas we're not, you know, for example, if you take a musician who spend hours playing their instrument, refining the way they do it, listening and getting the chord right, if it's a violinist, you know, they spend years. I've spent 30, over 30,000 hours in front of a mirror in my career, 20 year career. Works out to be five years nonstop, no pee breaks, in front of a mirror, refining, looking again, getting corrections, having to ch change shape, modify, change and change and change and change. And over time, it's grown. Yeah? It grows by itself. But are you prepared to do the work? Do you have the motivation or can you access your horses and bring them to the front and steer them in a direction where you want to go? Yeah. I was always amazed by um, dancers who were well you know, who are incredible, talented people, you know, not just in, in movement and, and their grace and their poise and their, and their physicality. They were real athletes and they would stop. I wasn't there, it wasn't their talent. It was their motivation. It was the reasons, positive and negative reasons, internal, external reasons, why they continued or stopped. Yeah? It's all there, it's all there. I agree, you have to go down to, yeah, sometimes you have to go down to the bottom of the, of the sea or the whatever, the, the lake, <laughs> before you can push yourself up. Huh? Apparently, uh, it's through suffering that we learn. We learn the biggest lessons through, through the difficulties. So that's why it's important to lean into the pain. That's why it's important to lean into the discomfort. And at the end of that, you will find your treasure you'll find what you're looking for. If you're prepared to look and to say, okay, it's difficult, I know, let me deal with it and let me handle this and let me move on and find out what it is I need to know, I need to learn. Yeah? And you, use, you get to use everything about you. It's perhaps like doing a, a decathlon or something or doing one of those you know, uh, running, hurdling, things that people do uh, for fun. Yeah? You, you get to use all your muscles, all the muscles in your body. Where the fear is, there's a way for development. I heard once, I think it's true. I live by that. I live by that. How can one overcome the belief that one million failures <laughs> to, do, uh, to do what you know means that is not possible? Well, look, one important word there, belief. Belief is what you think is true. Your belief is what you think is true, what you feel is certain. Whichever way, it's subjective. It's your narrative that you give yourself. It's the reasons, your narrative, your story, that you give yourself for why you can't do it. Before I even, you know, I think it was at 16 years old, one of my first jobs was working with, um, for life ins insurance. I was a salesman <laughs> for life insurance and I didn't do very well. But uh, in the training, it was very interesting because this guy was a hard-nosed life insurance salesman. And he would say, look, there's only one rule here. You either achieve what you want to achieve, the targets that you want to achieve, or you give yourself the excuses to why you can't. And giving yourself the excuses to why you can't is your narrative, is your reason, is your story that you tell yourself repeatedly over and over again, and it becomes true for you because it's a belief then. Yeah? Belief is something that you repeat, words that you repeat to yourself internally over and over again. It's your mantra. It's your mantra. Okay? Uh, your values are things that you think are important. Yeah? And that changes, of course, over time. Beliefs do too. And uh, your actions are things that you think are necessary, of course. 
So I meant uh, your job should be about, depending on what your mission is, what the market allows, what the market's external value again. Okay, your job is requested in two other points. Look, you can't avoid living on this earth and being exposed to your environment. You can't avoid that. Uh, but neither could the pioneers, neither could Einstein. <laughs> yeah, but he was a genius. Okay, well, neither could, uh, you know, there's loads of people who do this, who live life more on their own terms, more on their internal intrinsic motivation than the external ones. And they find ways, believe me. Their focus is such that they'll even find it if it doesn't exist. Like you can find a problem if it doesn't exist. You know those people? <laughs> they're always good at finding problems. They always arrive, they go, oh my God, they're so good at it. They're skilled. Right? They'll always find a problem when it doesn't exist. Same thing, we can always, all, all that is good and all that is bad is always available. It's up to us to choose. Yeah, kiki gagi, kiki ai, kiki gai. Yeah, feel good in your job, okay. Where uh, you're good at and where your values are, okay. Um, this is part of, okay, concept also. It's not just this, it's, it's, a, it's a human concept. How you can look in different um, uh, schools of thought and they all, at the kernel, they all have these. Uh, um, changing position, okay. Okay, okay, good, Japanese, okay. Okay, good. Um, last but not least, I know we're over time and I'll just take perhaps three minutes of your time to summarize, okay? Because we've gone through a lot of information. I hope it's been valuable to you. I hope it's, uh, my hope is that um, it has, uh, even if, okay, Leonard, he talks too much and um, um, I can learn this information. I'm inspired to learn this information perhaps on Google or take another course somewhere else. Fine, I've done my job. Um, if it inspires you to, motivate yourself to do something else to look further then then that's good for me that's a goal uh, so uh, we've gone through a lot of things we practice different ways to connect our body our mind our emotions and our spirit our drive our motivation to hack our own default pattern you know they talk about this you know um, ai you know this intelligence now we're able to never before in history we're able to gather information at you know immense amounts of information and process this information so that whatever we feed anyone, we know where they're going to act. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Joanna. I'll just take another two minutes. I'm going to skip the story, but let's go into this. We've practiced ways to connect with our bodies, minds, spirits, and look at our own default pattern. So when we look at it, we begin to have more um, leverage over it. Okay. Our default pattern gives us a temporary comfort. It's a, it's a settling pattern pattern, but it doesn't do enough to um, truly improve our situation, to energize ourselves, to have, do, be, and uh, live more, more in the present and more in the future. So we have to embrace something about ourselves to do that. We started to become aware of ourselves as harnessing energy. We are the hero heroes and heroines of our own narrative. We are the authors. So let's write a story that is conducive for us. Yeah. So if we are willing, if we uh, care to, if we desire to do this, if we li to live up to that standard, now if we desire to live up to that standard, then we can bring back what is outsourced to others. The authorities, my boss, he has the power. He, he dictates, my, dictates my mood and bring it back to us. We are the authority, we are the author. It is our ownership of our power. Yeah? So through these sessions, we've begun to direct this responsibility and effort back to ourselves, okay? We've inspired ourselves to cultivate not just a survival kit, ah, it's good for surviving, but a thrival kit, yeah? <laughs> for thriving, for living well, okay? And these are hacks. These are hacks to embrace our fears, to build a strong relationship, to, to, have, um, to have a feeling that we are resourceful, no matter what, if we have a hammer or a screwdriver, or if we have just um, some water and a string, we're able to do something, yeah? Because we are resourceful. We have the capacity to be resourceful. Um, so uh, in September, hopefully we'll be going deeper into these practices or maybe look at it again in a different way. And um, we'll have another opportunity to connect to our higher selves and to ask questions and share our experiences perhaps even more. I would like to thank you all for being here, for your presence, for your contribution. I'd like to thank Maria uh, for being here as well, for giving us, for giving me this opportunity to share what I know with you. 
I don't know a lot, but I what I know, I know. <laughs> and um, thanks for, to Howard as well for, for helping with the uh, technical side of things and uh, supporting us with her presence. So thank you, everyone. Take good care. <laughs> See you next time, perhaps. All the best and uh, good luck. <laughs>